News now looking at this issue. I'm Bill Hemmer. Good morning. A lot to follow on the Hill as the Mayorkas hearing gets underway. We also have two separate committees meeting right now, considering a resolution to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress after he defied a congressional subpoena. All right. Republicans want his testimony as they consider impeachment proceedings against his father, President Biden. Fox team coverage for you here. Chad Pergram tracking the push to impeach the secretary. But first, David Spun is following the Hunter Biden saga, and he's live in Los Angeles because that's where that's all going down. Hi, David. Hi, good morning. And Hunter Biden lives in Los Angeles. He's preparing for a federal court appearance tomorrow to answer for nine tax related federal charges, three are felonies. So that's why I'm in Los Angeles right now. And back in Washington, D.C., Hunter Biden clearly paying attention to the news there. Those two committees, the House Oversight Committee and Judiciary Committee, are undergoing what are called markups to begin contempt proceedings. The reason we are where we are today in Washington, D.C., with Hunter Biden is because he willfully ignored a congressional subpoena back in December. Instead, he chose to show up and make a statement in front of the media. You see him there with the Capitol Dome behind him, but he did not come for a scheduled deposition behind closed doors. He said he would, though, speak in public in front of cameras for millions to see. Here's Oversight Chair James Comer just a little while ago. He had his publicity stunt in front of the Senate. Uh, essentially gave Congress the middle finger, said he was there to answer questions, then drove off with Eric Swalwell. So uh, this isn't uh, the way that the law works. Now, if contempt passes these two committees, Dana and Bill, then passes the full House, D.C. U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves will have quite a decision to make. Graves has had four contempt cases before him. He prosecuted, prosecuted two and declined two. Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro faced actual criminal charges. Their cases were a little different as they both claimed executive privilege. However, Mark Meadows and Dan Scavino were not prosecuted on contempt by the Biden-appointed Matthew Graves. He was appointed in November of 2021. Back here in Los Angeles, again, Hunter Biden will appear before a federal judge tomorrow to answer those nine related tax charges. It's supposed to be a first appearance and a potential arraignment, meaning he's expected to plead not guilty. However, stranger things has happened, as we saw back in Delaware in July. So we are prepared for anything. Guess what day it is? Why are you gay? Guess what day it is? Mike, 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 Mike. What day is it, Mike? <laughs> Guess what today is? How happy are you that we're going to jail? I'd say happier than a camel on Wednesday. Hump day! An insane way to start 2024. Things are popping off right now, breaking live. Hunter Biden has stormed. Capitol Hill. It's Benny. Today is Wednesday, January 10th, 2024, and Hunter Biden has stormed the committee hearing to hold him in contempt. This is breaking right now. This is happening as we are live. Our team has furiously been loading clips, and we got it all ready for you. We are locked and loaded and ready to go. Insanity. Also, the Fulton County prosecutor, Fannie Willis, romantic partner, met with the Biden White House before charging Trump, has been paid nearly a million dollars of taxpayer funds. The Fannie Willis scandal is exploding. People are getting their just desserts. And former U.S. Attorney Brett Tolman joins the show. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news right now. Hunter Biden showed up to his own contempt hearing, got asked... If he's on crack, got ripped a new one by two Republican members of the committee, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Nancy Mace to his face. Nancy Mace asked him if he had any balls. What's going on? Okay, so we have it all breaking down. This has all been happening in the last 15 minutes. In the last 15 minutes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this was Fox News moments ago during a live broadcast. They weren't planning on covering this. And then they went screaming into the committee hearing to show suddenly Hunter Biden storming into the building. Check this out. So get this now, Hunter Biden is on Capitol Hill. And so far as I know, Dana, this was not planned. No, why is David Spunt in Los Angeles? Yeah. I'm confused. So, so two weeks ago, we were sitting here and we'll re rack it for you and show it yeah. to you. It's just Sorry, happening right now. You got two committees right now looking at this um, 
resolution to hold Hunter Biden in contempt of Congress. All right, that's happening today in two different committees. We were sitting here a couple the weeks ago. Um, he he shows later, up on the Hill Chairman Comer and, mm -hmm. and goes to the Senate side of the Capitol, delivers a statement and walks away. And that really ticked off a lot of people. This is the um, ranking minority member. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see there on Fox, like even Fox was scattered. Fox was going, doo, 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 doo. their entire shot was glitching. This is currently ongoing. Hunter Biden. Okay, so we are getting all this news sent into us right now. Hunter Biden's pulling a a Donald Trump. And we're going to explain that in just a moment <laughs> exactly like what's going on here. Because all of the news cameras are following Hunter Biden through the halls. Hunter Biden is like walking through the hallway here, clip G5. You can see like there is a mob around Hunter. Now, Hunter Biden has gone into the committee hearing to listen to his own contempt proceedings, which, according to all of our sources, Hunter Biden was going to be held in contempt, which means that if Hunter Biden's on the Hill, they could actually literally arrest Hunter Biden right now. They could just order his arrest because he's being held in contempt of Congress. Congress has his own police and his own jail. Hunter Biden wandering through the hallways of Capitol Hill, creating chaos, creating a mob. I mean, you saw even there on Fox News, Fox News, trillion dollar company. They can't even get their shots right. So this is all happening live right now. We're going to synthesize all of it for you. This is what it looks like on Capitol Hill. Absolute chaos and bedlam. So I'll answer your question if you be quiet and let me make a statement, okay? What kind of crack do you normally smoke, Mr. Biden? Let me start again. Hunter Biden was and is a private citizen. What Despite this, Republicans have use? sought to use him as a surrogate to attack his father. And despite their improper partisan motives, on six different occasions since February of 2023, we have offered to work with the House committees to see what and how relevant information to any legitimate inquiry could be provided. Our first five offers were ignored, and then in November, they issued a subpoena for a behind closed doors deposition, a tactic that the Republicans have repeatedly misused in their political crusade to selectively leak and mischaracterize what witnesses have said. What are you going to do when the House... Last fall, Chairman Comer made an explicit offer to conduct that people like Hunter to and to had, like him, the option to attend a deposition or a public hearing. So that's Hunter Biden wandering the halls of... Capitol Hill, like doing his own press conferences again in the halls of Capitol Hill. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this was before the committee hearing. And then the committee hearing gets started and Hunter surprises the committee hearing by marching in. We have actually the footage of Hunter Biden marching into the committee hearing. I, like, I don't know how you even accomplish this because these committee hearings are typically pretty packed and there's not like extra space, but people cleared out and let Hunter Biden sit in the front row of the committee hearing. This is Hunter Biden storming into the committee. So he staged, his lawyer stages like this little mealy mouth press conference, and then they storm into the committee hearing. Watch this. They want to Julie, talk to we Hunter have behind these live doors. images right now. We, we see Hunter Biden appearing at the Capitol, just walking through the door. It looks like he's surrounded with his Secret Service team there and, and other members of his entourage, but he is officially at the Capitol as these hearings get underway. We're looking at live images right now as he goes through, it appears, the, the medical, the metal detector or nearby the metal detectors. Uh, and yep. we presumably expect him to enter at least one of these committee rooms because, again, this is before the Oversight Committee, also action happening in the Judiciary Committee. We're just going to follow these cameras and Hunter Biden and see where he's going to head, what's going to happen next. Again, he wasn't expected to show up for these hearings from the sense of he wasn't called by the people holding these hearings to appear. Uh, so he's choosing to be there. I want to bring... So we're going to show you right now, it's processing. We're going to show you right now uh, what happened inside the committee hearing because it's insane. And also our show is being, clips from our show is being used in the committee hearing. It's wild. Our production team is the best in the on the internet and we are clipping and getting you all of this content right now for like a backgrounder on what's going on here. You will recall that Hunter Biden was supposed to show up for a closed door deposition. 
This is how it works on Capitol Hill. We've had like 20 members of Congress on this program to explain how it works. You bring people in for a closed door deposition. You do not do it in public. This is how it works in every lawsuit. And you depose the witness and you lock in their testimony. And this is no matter Hunter Biden or Don Jr. Doesn't matter. This is how it works. And you figure out if like their testimony is going to hurt your case, help your case, whether you're going to call them as a witness. They've done this for like 20,000 other people for this committee as it pertains to Joe Biden and his business. They've done this for Devin Archer is a good example. Tony Bobulinski is a good example. But Hunter Biden, for some reason, on the day that he was supposed to go into a closed door deposition, held a therapy session, I guess is the best way to uh, describe it. Can we get an article just to just to detail what he did last time? Like, held a therapy session where he like stood up on Capitol Hill and refused to go into the committee hearing and he whined and moaned and bitched and muled about his dad and his feelings and took his, you know, took his handkerchief out of his pocket, rubbed it in onions, banged it into his eyes and a little bit of crack powder poofed. And he was able to like muster up a tear or two, crack his voice, right? And Hunter Biden complained that Marjorie Taylor Greene held up naked photos of him in Congress. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was about, Hunter. Everyone just wants to see you naked. Not the fact that you are actually engaging in sex crimes, you sick, sick puppy. But anyway, this is a tactic. It's a tactic to have the cameras telling the narrative of the Bidens instead of the narrative of Republicans on Capitol Hill. It is a tactic that's been used very effectively. This was the last time Hunter Biden went to the Hill. So this is the precursor for what's going on today. Sorry that we're rushing here, but like there's too much breaking news happening right now. So the precursor of what happened today is Hunter Biden didn't go to his first interview, his deposition, and then went outside for this press conference, as you can see here, playing on your screen. We're not going to play the full thing because it's like a seven minute. We've already played it a couple times on the show. It's like seven minutes of Hunter Biden mewling and crying and complaining about his life and what a sad little life he's had and how great his daddy is. So ladies and gentlemen, um, that's what he did. That's what led to the contempt charge, right? This contempt hearing that's ongoing. And then Hunter Biden does it again, shows up to the contempt hearing and it's insane. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is the first footage. Uh, oh, okay. Well, ALX says that we're going to get, we're going to get like the actual, we're going to get the actual full, we're going to get the actual full sitting in, okay, of Hunter Biden in this hearing. So we're getting that loaded right now. Hunter Biden walked through the halls of Congress and was asked, are you on crack? So on the way to the hearing, Hunter Biden was asked by a reporter, what kind of crack are you on? What kind of crack are you on today? Is what Hunter Biden was getting inside of the halls of Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got it for you. It's happening right now. We got it for you. Uh, here's Hunter Biden being asked live on camera. What kind of crack are you on today? Ladies and gentlemen, we will have the first, we will have the full experience of Hunter Biden inside of the committee room that's loading for you right now. It's a relatively long clip, but I think it's worth seeing because what you're seeing right now is a tactic that they have learned from Donald Trump. Now, I'm not saying that they're doing this as well as Donald Trump or that they're doing this for righteous purposes as Donald Trump was doing. But as this was happening 10 minutes before the show goes live, this suddenly the chaos Right. We have to like trash the whole show we were going to do and have to redo it. And this is obviously why you tune in and we love you and we thank you for this. We are working for you. But I got on the phone with producer ALX and I was like, this is what Trump used to do. Not trying to compliment Hunter Biden, but just trying to say that they're trying to t peel a page out of Trump's genius playbook. You will remember 
that they were able to dig up. They went into the bowels of their audio files and were able to dig up uh, Donald Trump engaging in locker room talk, uh, so-called, during the 2016 election. In a piece of in a piece of uh, content that was never supposed to air, and that was supposed to be in private, but they went and they went in to try and like torpedo Trump's campaign. They they sent a thousand people to go research every bit that they had on Donald Trump. And they were able to come up with him saying some naughty words, right? Uh, uh, and and then they they try Hillary Clinton of all people, Hillary Clinton, right now who's like all over the Epstein documents. Bill Clinton's listed hundreds of times the Epstein documents who comes from like Bill Clinton, like a, a literal bona fide predator president. Right. And hit and his attack dog, Hillary Clinton, who's attacked all of his victims. They tried to frame it as Donald Trump is a misogynist as Donald Trump is against women. Okay. So that was the, that was the framing. And they were going into the last debate with that framing. And Donald Trump did a master engaged in a masterclass. He was able to swagger Jack, the entire narrative from them by doing a press conference minutes before the debate with all of Bill Clinton's accusers. Do you remember this? This is the kind of playbook that they looked at and they go, my God, what are we going to do? And so then suddenly all of the news reports were, man, remember Paula Jones? Remember Juanita Broderick? Remember this clip of Donald Trump just stealing, swagger jacking? The news cycle away from the Clintons to put the spotlight back on the predator president, Bill Clinton, saying, hey, women, you want to put this guy back in the White House? This guy on the Lolita Express flying the little St. James? This guy? This is the champion of women? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think not. Remember, this is what Donald Trump did. Watch. There you see in the middle of your screen Donald Trump. But from left to right, Kathleen Willey, Juanita Broderick, then Donald Trump in the middle. Kathy Shelton, Paula Jones, uh, these are women who have made very strong accusations against Bill Clinton, except for Kathy Shelton. Uh, she uh, has accused, uh, she, uh, she was uh, a rape victim, and Hillary Clinton, as a public defender, represented the man accused of raping her. Donald Trump is speaking of these women. I don't know if our audio is good enough, but, but we really can't understand what he's saying. But this sets the stage for what could be a really ugly and contentious debate tonight. Are you hearing Wolf Blitzer? Are you hearing the words of Wolf Blitzer? Donald Trump forced into the mouths of CNN anchors whose mouths are typically surgically attached to the boots of the Clintons, licking them. Their tongues have been sewn to the bottoms of the boots of the Clintons. Donald Trump forced into the mouth of Wolf Blitzer. Uh, these women all accuse Bill Clinton of rape. That's what he said. This is a masterstroke by Donald Trump. I'm not saying the Bidens are particularly adept at it, but that is what they're trying to do here. They're trying to create a circus in order to deprive Republicans of the ability to hold the Bidens in contempt in order to create such a narrative of Hunter Biden's accessibility that the Republicans won't be able to win the narrative battle. It's really, really something. It's wild to see. We thought you should see it in its totality. So ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This is the full broadcast of Hunter Biden running up to the very front of the committee room hearing, causing absolute chaos and sitting there with a split screen while James Comer begins to read into the order the contempt of Hunter Biden. This is insanity, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to be following the comment section here, uh, and we have more, but this is, uh, wild. Let's go. All right. So he's inside this room with this committee. Let's watch. The chairman urged Mr. Biden to come up here at a public committee hearing on September 13th on Newsmax. The chairman stated Hunter Biden is more than welcome to come in front of the committee. If he wants to clear his good name, if he wants to come and say, you know, there weren't 20 show companies, he's invited today. We'll drop everything. On October 31, on a nationwide podcast, the chairman stated, we have mountains of evidence. Now we're ready to bring them in. We're in the downhill phase now because we have so many documents and we can bring these people in 
for depositions or committee hearings, whichever they choose. For depositions or committee hearings, whichever they choose, and we can ask these questions with evidence. On November 6th, again on Newsmax, our good chairman stated, I will extend that invitation on your show right now, Rob, if the Biden family wants to join Tony Bobulinski in an official oversight committee hearing and answer questions that the American people have, then that invitation's open right now. They can come on in and do that. On November 28th, Hunter Biden, through his lawyer, agreed to Chairman Comer's multiple public requests. He agreed to appear precisely at a public hearing under oath to answer the committee's questions on December 13th. Exactly what our good colleagues, the Republicans who had information about January 6th, never agreed to do. They never agreed to testify anywhere under oath about what they knew. The letter that came in from Mr. Biden embraced the importance of having a public proceeding that, quote, would prevent selective leaks, manipulated transcripts, doctored exhibits, or one-sided press statements, especially in light of the committee's past use of closed-door sessions to manipulate, even distort the facts, Mr. And Chairman, misinform Mr. the Chairman, public. Mr. Chairman, I have an inquiry. State your well, point. Um, I, 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 Mr. Mr. Chairman, don't we have House rules and committee rules uh, regarding uh, subpoenas uh, and then rules about having uh, hearings and, and having questions uh, with, with witnesses we that do. must be followed? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to reclaim my time. state the well, rules, uh, Mr. Chairman? Exa uh, hold on, hold on. We could just interrupt Mr. each other Rasmus, with an inquiry? Your, your time was expired. I'd like to know the rules of the House and our committee. Read them. They're available to every member. The, the rules state uh, for a deposition, if that's what you're asking, three days notice. You have to have the stenographer and all of that. So that's that's. Mr. So Chairman, just to clarify, we can't Mr. have someone Mr. just walk. Time's in. expired, Mr. Chairman. Point Do any other members wish to be heard? Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman, I, I did endure multiple interruptions in my opening. Could I finish? Would that be well? Right? You you went over your five <clears throat> minutes, but I'll give you thirty more seconds. Okay. Um, the chairman refused to take yes for an answer from Hunter Biden. Instead, on December 1, they pulled a bait and switch. They changed the terms of their request. They rejected his offer or his acceptance of their offer and insisted that he now come in and sit for a secret closed door deposition. On December 6, Hunter Biden's lawyer reiterated that Hunter Biden was willing to accept the chair's original request and once again offered to appear on December 13th or any other date in December to answer any question pertinent and relevant to the subject matter. He again raised concerns about closed door sessions. That's what brings us to today, Mr. Chairman. Um, we, he has materially, substantially, in good faith complied with what your requests were. He complied and I, with the subpoena. We, 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 we right. would have expired. We would have loved that. Do any other compliance. members wish to be heard? Mr. Chair Mr. recognizes Ms. May from Mr. South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman Comer. Um, first of all, my first question is who bribed Hunter Biden to be here today? That's my first question. Um, second question, you are the epitome of white privilege, coming into the Oversight Committee, spitting in our face, ignoring a congressional subpoena to be deposed. What are you afraid of? You have no balls to come up here and... M Mr. Chairman, point of inquiry. Mr. Chairman... Um, if, the the, if, 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 the gentle, if the general lady wants to hear from Hunter Biden, we can hear from him right now, Mr. Chairman. Let's take a vote and hear from I'm Hunter speaking. Biden. What are, are you afraid of? To speak hold on, here? hold on, hold on. Why, order, why order, order. Are, order. are women allowed to speak in here or no? Are, okay. are women allowed to speak in order. here or no? Because you keep interrupting me. I, I'll interrupt the you chairman. Keep interrupting. I don't know that he's a lady. I think that, uh, that Hunter Biden should be arrested right here, right now, and go straight to jail. Our nation is founded on the rule of come law on, come on. and the premise come that on. the law applies equally to everyone, no matter what your last Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Point of order. It doesn't matter who you are. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Biggs over here. Donald Trump Jr. Biggs over here. Uh, state your point, Mr. Biggs. Yeah, my, my point of order is this. Are we going to continue on with, with this blatant interruption? It, this, this is absurd and inappropriate. I intend to give my statement... I don't intend to have anybody interrupted. Uh, I'm not going to interrupt your statements. I think you should have decorum and courtesy and don't act like a bunch of 
Nimrod. You just interrupted a woman. And, and that's five. You know, I got, I got we, permission. We I agree. Did, everyone Mr. has Mr. five Chairman, minutes. Can we agree? Point, point of order again. The assertion that I interrupted was absolutely false. That's typical of the gentleman who spoke it. I got permission to speak from the chairman. I spoke. I was interrupted yet again right. by the gentleman who doesn't choose to go through the chair and follow proper order. I encourage us. I, I, I think if we're going to have any respect at all, we need to have proper decorum. Well, you're well back. said. Well said. I'd like to finish. The rules are everyone's going to be recognized for five minutes. Anyone that wants to be recognized will be recognized for five minutes. Ms. Mace has four minutes and 13 seconds left. Chair recognizes it, Ms. Mace. It does not matter who you are, where you come from, or who your father is, or your last name. Yes, I'm looking at you, Hunter Biden, as I'm speaking to you. You are not above the law at all. The facts in this case are crystal clear. This committee used and issued a lawful subpoena to Hunter Biden, a critical witness in this committee's investigation into Biden family corruption. Hunter Biden and his lawyers did not claim privilege of any kind because clearly he has none. They didn't contest the legitimacy of our reasons for issuing this subpoena. No reasons because they clearly are legitimate. And yet he refused to comply. Uh, Trump's family members, Don Trump Jr., he uh, he did not defy a congressional subpoena. He showed up multiple times for multiple depositions for several hours. Um, in doing so, you know, Hunter Biden broke the law. He did so deliberately. You did so flagrantly. You showed up on the Hill, on the Senate side, the day of that congressional subpoena to defy it and spit in the face of this committee. That's what you did. The question the American people are asking us is, what is Hunter Biden so afraid of? Why can't you show up for a, d a congressional deposition? You're here for a political stunt. This is just a PR stunt to you. This is just a game that you are playing with the American people. You're playing with the truth. Um, Hunter Biden wasn't afraid to sell access to Joe Biden to the highest bidder when he was in elected office. He wasn't afraid to trade on the Biden brand, peddle influence, and share those ill-gotten gains with members of, of his family, including Joe Biden. He wasn't afraid to compromise the integrity of the presidency and vice president by involving Joe Biden in shady business deals with our foreign adversaries. But Hunter Biden, you were too afraid to show up for a deposition. And you still can't today. Um, I believe that Hunter Biden should be held completely in contempt. I think he should be hauled off to jail right now because it wasn't long ago, two of my friends on the other side of the aisle, um, that you also believed in the, the power of a congressional subpoena. Not long ago at all. You believed in holding those who refused to comply with a congressional subpoena accountable. And I stood with each and every one of you. I am the only member in this room today who has held a member of my own party in contempt of Congress for not showing up for a subpoena. And I see nothing but complete hypocrisy on the other side of the aisle. The ranking member of this committee even so eloquently put it, the lesson is please tell your children out there in America, if you get a subpoena to go before Congress, go. You have a legal responsibility to do so. So the hypocrisy is stunning. What are we to tell our children today? There's nothing the other side can say with a straight face. As the only member of this committee to vote to hold a member of contempt of my own party, let me be clear, this should not be a partisan issue. If Congress issues a subpoena, you show up, period. This is not a responsibility we take lightly. It brings no joy for us to do this, but the president's son broke the law and must be held accountable in the same way anybody is on both sides of the aisle to do so. And my last message to you, Hunter Biden, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And will I the gentle lady yield for a question? Will the gentle lady yield? Hot damn. Hot diggity damn. What have we been saying about this program, about this show, about the value that we wish to bring to our movement, our freedom movement? Check out this image from the very start of this hearing, the first slide. That's our show, baby. Making it into the history books. Thank you. We have the entire rest of the hearing that is uh, almost done. We're going to play it. We can only load up like 10 minute clips at a time. But ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Let's make it big on the screen. God bless you. We say thank you. We bow our heads in humility. We hustle, we grind, we work hard, and here we are. Right there. Look at the, look at the expression. 
<laughs> it's like a creep come true. Look at his salty libs. Look at salty Jamie. Look at salty Jamie Raskin and Jamie Comer. You know, you know what you did on this show. You spit fire, my dear friend. The bulldog. We're back at it. Nancy Mace telling Hunter Biden to his face that he has no balls. Ooh, ooh, baby. And wait till you see what Marjorie Taylor Greene just did to Hunter Biden to his face. The next clip I'm about to show you is uh, significantly shorter. This is the end of Hunter. This is picks up right at where we left off. We can only there's there's limitations to how long of clips we can load. We are ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. This is the moment that Marjorie Taylor Greene looked Hunter Biden straight in the face and got Hunter Biden to freak out in public, have a hysterical panic attack and literally run away. I cannot believe it's real. It's like I'm living a dream. Here we go, baby. Marjorie Taylor Greene versus Hunter Biden. Hunter runs, runs, pissing his pants. Oh man. Oh man. Christmas come early in 2024. Let's go. Sure. Um, I, I do want to commend the gentlelady who was the only Republican who stood up uh, and voted to hold in contempt the Republican members of the House who blatantly and categorically refused to comply with subpoenas that came from the bipartisan January 6th committee. I would like to ask my friend Ms. Mace from South Carolina um, whether she's aware of all the case law which says that the committee has to engage in good faith interaction with the witnesses they've called and they're supposed to arrive at a solution. And what do you think about the fact that the chairman on multiple occasions gave this witness the opportunity to come before the full committee and he agreed to that? We issued a congressional subpoena, and I know with your constitutional law background, you know exactly what that means, and he should have showed up. And because of your vote and because of your statements, you should be voting to hold, hold this man in contempt of Congress today, right now, if you're going to be consistent on your own policies and your own words. Gentlelady's time's expired. Chair, recognize Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's good to see you after a long break. So... I'm listening to the gentlelady from South Carolina about the witness being afraid to come in front of the committee. It's interesting. He's here. He doesn't seem to be too afraid. In fact, for some reason, the chairman, who on multiple occasions invited the witness to come on TV, Apparently, the chairman wants to pretend like his statements on television or in interviews don't matter. But it didn't happen once. It didn't happen twice. It happened multiple times. The chairman said the witness can choose whether to come to a deposition or to a public hearing in front of the committee. The witness accepted the chairman's invitation. It just so happens the witness is here. If the committee wants to hear from the witness, and the chairman gave the witness that option, then the only folks that are afraid to hear from the witness with the American people watching are my friends on the other side of the aisle. I don't know if there's a proper motion, Mr. Chairman, but I'll make a motion. Let's vote. Let's take a vote. Who wants to hear from Hunter right now, today? Anyone? Come on. Who wants to hear from Hunter? The motion's out of work. Yeah. No one. So I'm a visual learner, and the visual is clear. Nobody over there wants to hear from the witness. Oh, there's one. Thank you. Will you yield for a question? I'm not there yet, but I will eventually. Uh, so there's no one, well, other than one or two, that want to hear from the witness. So the majority of my colleagues over there, including the chairman, don't want to hear from the witness with the American people watching. So. Mr. Chairman, are, I, I just want to hear from you. Will you acknowledge that you invited the witness on television to choose whether he could come to a public hearing? And do you stand by your words or do you renege that invitation to the witness? To answer the question I've said repeatedly, the, after the deposition, Mr. Biden can come in front of a public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to play the video, but that is not what you said 
on television multiple times. And we have the quotes. We can put them up. You said the witness can choose between a deposition. Listen, or Mr. Moskowitz, Mr. Biden doesn't make the rules. We make the no, rules. That, no, Mr. Chairman, you make the rules. And the rule you made is that he can choose. I, that, those, the rule is... Those were your, those were your words. Reclaiming we, my time. He was issued two lawful subpoenas. Re reclaiming my time, Mr. Chairman. No, you issued yeah. those subpoenas after he took you up on your invitation to come. And then you were like, oh, no, no. Oh, my God. What did we, what did I do? I invited him to come so the American people can hear his side of the story. I put my foot in my mouth. So now I must bury him in the basement where we can decide what we're going to release to the public so that we can continue to tell that story. Mr. Chairman, you have said multiple times that this is not about Hunter. It's about Joe Biden. And even this morning on Mornings with Maria, she asked another simple question, the question you have been asked multiple times, which is, do you have evidence to impeach the president of the United States? Before you said, I hope so. Today you said, I think so. And the answer is, you don't. And you still don't. And so we continue to be here and have these charades. To my colleagues who talk about lawful subpoenas, I appreciate the gentle ladies the gentlelady lady from South Carolina who voted to, to hold people in contempt. Listen, I'll, I'll make this bipartisan. I'll vote for the Hunter contempt today. You can get my vote. You can get my vote. But I want you to show the American people that you're serious. Here is the subpoena to Representative Scott Perry, who did not comply. I'd like to enter this into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mark Meadows. I'd like to enter this into the record, who did not comply. Here is the subpoena to Jim Jordan who did not comply with a lawful subpoena. I'd like to enter that into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mo Brooks, who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. Here is the subpoena to Mr. Biggs, who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. And here's the subpoena to Mr. McCarthy, who did not comply. I'd like to enter that into the record. There's an amendment coming to add some of those names into the contempt order. You vote to add those names and show the American people that we apply the law equally, not just when it's Democrats, right? It's a crime when it's Democrats, but when it's Trump and the Republicans, it's just fine. No, show that you're serious and that everyone is not above the law. Vote for that amendment, and I'll vote for the Hunter Biden contempt. I yield back. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, recognize Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse me, Hunter. Oh, Apparently, no. you're afraid of my words. Whoa. Uh, here goes. <laughs> oh. I'd like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> wow, that's too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's clear and obvious for everyone watching this hearing today that Hunter Biden is terrified of strong conservative Republican women because he can't even face my words as I was about to speak to him. What a coward. And this is also a coward that sat right here in front of me. Could you please, I'll answer your question. Oh, run, bitch, run! <laughs> Oh my God! Ah, uh, Hunter Biden. Okay, so well, I'm like sitting there as it, I'm in, I'm as enraptured as everyone else. What I'm watching with you because we this just happened minutes ago, and I'm watching it for the first time with you, and I just can't. I can't. I'm screaming in the studio. I'm screaming as soon as Marjorie Taylor Greene got a chance to speak. Hunter Biden who has abused and trafficked and assaulted so many women, who has been such a degenerate pervert to so many women and, and women that he employed and breaking laws and trafficking women across state lines. He is, is filth. He's filth. Hunter Biden, who has the finger lakes tattooed on his back for some reason. Can somebody explain that to me? Hunter Biden who has filmed all of this, and it is well-documented. So well-documented that Marjorie Taylor Greene has actually held it up in Congress. Hunter Biden complained about that. Hunter Biden had his feelings hurt very badly that Marjorie Taylor Greene once did this to him, uh, holding up some of the images of his crimes. Hunter recorded sex tapes with prostitutes he paid for out of his law firm's account to cross state lines. This is, of course, illegal and a violation of the Mann Act. This is why Hunter Biden 
fled the hearing room. But it's so delicious. You must see it again. You got to see it again from three different angles. Here's the angle from MSNBC broadcasting the same thing. They had Hunter Biden on camera and Hunter Biden, like literally, literally pissing his pants, shaking, getting up and leaving. You got to see this. It's too good. Watch. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, recognize Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, Apparently, you're afraid of my words. Whoa. Uh, here goes. <laughs> oh. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Burst their bubble. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the comments. Like, crack break. Gotta get. Gotta get a crack break in. That's what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. And his stash at the White House got confiscated. Marjorie Taylor Greene posting immediately uh, after this, stating uh, that Hunter Biden uh, was fearful of her. Hunter traffics in women for sex, but ran away when I recognized was recognized to speak. The only woman Hunter Biden likes to deal with, women that Hunter Biden likes to deal with are women he hires for sex flies across the country, films and photographs in his disgusting porn, and posts to his nasty video to his porn sites. Hunter can't handle being held accountable for the crimes he committed. Marjorie Taylor Greene, the guest on our program yesterday, of course, we had no idea that Hunter would be pulling a stunt like this, but Marjorie Taylor Greene posting this video, the raw feed from the committee room, which is incredible and captures her comments after Hunter Biden fled the scene because he was facing a strong woman that he didn't pay for. Watch. Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, Apparently, you're afraid of my words. Uh, here <laughs> oh. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> wow, that's too bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's clear and obvious for everyone watching this hearing today that Hunter Biden is terrified of strong conservative Republican women because he can't even face my words as I was about to speak to him. What a coward. What a coward. What a moment. And what did Hunter Biden do? He went running to his taxpayer funded security team and sprinted down the hall, literally ran away. For Marjorie Taylor Greene, an incredible moment here. We we have the footage of him being being captured, like captured running down the hallway. It's too good. It's too good. What universe am I living in? It's this is incredible. Here's Hunter Hunter Biden literally sprinting away with his taxpayer funded security team from Marjorie. Everybody to left or right, left to right, to right, left or right. Mr. Biden, you plan on testifying today? Anything you want to anything you want to say to the committee? Make a hole. Is this it? What's your message to the committee, Mr. What's your message to the committee? Oh man. Oh, can't take the heat. Get out of the kitchen. One of our favorites, Tim Burchett, tossed up a tweet, a photo, a selfie of him with Hunter Biden saying Hunter walked out of the uh, committee hearing when Marjorie Taylor Greene began to ask him tough questions. Can't stand a strong woman he doesn't have control over. Man, what a moment. Tom Fitton, one of our uh, one of our favorite legal scholars who comes on the program uh, with regularity, says Hunter Biden showed up to the House committee hearing on pending resolution to hold him in contempt. He obviously thinks with good reason that he's untouchable. The House can and should arrest him if he is found in contempt. I mean, he's right up there. Put him in handcuffs. Let's go, baby. I mean, Hunter Biden's in handcuffs on all of our thumbnails. Make that real. Let's go. What an incredible, incredible moment. Now, uh, a reminder, a reminder of who they learned all this from. A reminder of who all this was 
sort of derived from. There was this, this is an attempt to flip the narrative and to own this news cycle by creating a circus, creating controversy or creating alternative news cycles uh, that are juicier or that the press can't help themselves but report on. So it's Hunter Biden flanked by his two lawyers, scumbag lawyers, his sugar brother, Hollywood lawyer uh, named Kevin, Kevin, I can't remember what the full, what the name of his, the, the long haired lawyer, Kevin Morris. Okay. Hunter Biden is creating a circus in order to deviate from the actual headlines at hand. They learned this from Donald Trump. We played you the clip of Donald Trump with all of Bill Clinton's rape accusers before the debate. Bill Clinton, of course, executing Bill Clinton, of course, um, a man who certainly didn't want the spotlight back on him. Yet Wolf Blitzer is sitting here saying all these women have accused Bill Clinton of rape right before the debate where Hillary was going to try and frame Donald Trump as a misogynist. Donald Trump's done this before. Donald Trump has they're trying to learn from Trump, OK, trying to Bigfoot Trump. I don't think it's going to work, but I want to give you the play at hand here. They're going to create the illusion that Hunter Biden was available for questioning on the Hill. And Republicans just didn't. The Republicans weren't strong enough to ask the tough questions of Hunter. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, by the way, also in moments, we're going to be getting to uh, Brett Tolman, who is uh, an absolutely spectacular guest for this topic, former U.S. attorney who can fill us in on whether Hunter Biden could be arrested today or not. But I think this is such an important point to talk about, like, what's actually happening? What is the strategy here? The strategy is to create the visual illusion that Hunter Biden was available for questioning and Republicans couldn't handle the heat. That is not the case. In fact, as we have played for you, it is Hunter Biden who fled when Marjorie Taylor Greene was about to question him. Because Marjorie Taylor Greene in the past has done this. Here's the actual clip of Marjorie Taylor Greene holding up the visual images of Hunter Biden's sex crime. Remember, words lie and words can be manipulated, twisted, and wound up in order to lie in print. Photos don't lie. Videos don't lie. It is the demonstrable and empirical evidence of our time. The power of a photograph, the power of a visual. Marjorie gets it. She did this in the hearing. Hunter Biden left and fled. This is important. It's going to be important to counter narrative this. Are Republicans smart enough to do this? No, they're not. We are on our show. Does Mar did Marjorie Taylor Greene have these slides ready? Was she going to pull these slides out for Hunter? Watch what she did uh, earlier in the year. The reason Hunter Biden ran away is because he didn't want this to happen to him in public. Watch. Mr. Of, of Hunter Biden Mr. Chairman, making sex, excuse me, this is my time, making of, pornography. Should we be displaying this, Mr. Chairman, get, 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 in the committee? Get a lady's time's expired and uh, went two and a half minutes Mr. over. Chairman, Mr. Bufume wants the two and a half minutes. He can have it if, if he wants to yield some to Ms. Ocasio-Cortez. When she goes, she can have it. So Hunter knew that that might have been locked and loaded. And what happens next? Donald Trump had a narrative spun about him whilst he was president that Donald Trump was a dangerous man and would bring great war and suffering to our nation and would cause all of the leaders of the world to hate us and to attack us and would destroy uh, American hegemony and military dominance and would begin World War III. That narrative couldn't be farther from the truth. Donald Trump's the most peaceful president we ever had, but Donald Trump needed to show that in, vi in a visual sense. And so Donald Trump, taking a page out of his own Trumpian playbook, traveled to a nation that we were, <laughs> we still are in a, League in a legitimate war with, right? There has been no peace ever declared with the nation of North Korea. Donald Trump went to the border of North Korea in order to Bigfoot that narrative and create a visual and did this. No, no, my friend. 
사상 처음으로 우리 땅을 밟으시는 대통령이 되십니다. Just to show you how much better Donald Trump is at this game than Hunter Biden. Imagine if Donald Trump, imagine if Kim Jong Un had like started talking to Donald Trump and then he and then he pissed his pants and ran the other direction. But that's exactly what Hunter Biden did. Hunter Biden thinks he's having one of these moments, but he's not. Donald Trump was accused of hating minorities or hating uh, the 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 urban demographics of this nation. And so, in order to ply that one away. Donald Trump created, and I'm not sure, I think this is the only time I saw Donald Trump actually shocked in the White House. Donald Trump invited a very famous rapper to the Oval Office. And that rapper wore a MAGA hat. This is what ensued. No, I'm, I'm standing in that spot. I love this guy right here. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. Yeah, that's really yeah. Come here. Yeah. That's, that's really nice. And that's from the heart. I didn't want to put you in that position, you know, but, but that's from the heart. Special guy. These two are special people. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, they're special people. And I appreciate it. Jim, Kanye, I appreciate it. So let's go have some lunch. Okay? Thank you all very much. I love this guy right here. I love this guy. He comes up and claps Donald Trump. So there are th those are three instances of Donald Trump just bigfooting. Uh, the, the the media narratives about him. So this is the playbook that they're trying to draw a card from. Donald Trump has also shown up at his own trials. We have clips of this. Donald Trump has shown up at his civil trial in New York. Nobody was counting on this. Uh, this is Donald Trump first showing up at his civil trial. Uh, again, effectively pulling off this media maneuver because Trump is much, much better at it than the Bidens, even though the Bidens own the media, even though the Democratic Party the, all corporate media has total and complete fealty to the Democrat Party, and they loathe Donald Trump. Trump's still better at it. Still is able to make it work better for him. Watch. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the hearing is ongoing on Capitol Hill for the contempt of Congress. As you can imagine, it is, is still a circus. We will bring you news from that as it breaks. James Comer has posted on X. The president's summons is not above the law. Hunter's willful refusal to comply with the committee subpoena is a criminal act. All America, Americans must be treated equally under the law, and that includes the Bidens. So they push forward with the contempt of Congress charge, which will, of course, go to the Justice Department. And will it die? We're not sure. The case against Hunter Biden, sent out from Andy Biggs here, defied lawfully issued congressional subpoena, sat on board of directors, corrupt uh, Ukrainian company, received... Uh, $24 million from corrupt foreign companies, facilitated approximately 20 conversations and meetings between VP Biden, sold Joe Biden's brand to give the illusion of power. Hunter must be held accountable. This is the case against Hunter Biden, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we can't really think of a better guest, to be quite honest, to join us as it pertains to the egregious and stunning uh, happenings on Capitol Hill than former U.S. attorney, Brett Tolman, who's currently the executive director of Right on Crime. Brett Tolman joins the show now. Brett! I'm so happy. I was screaming at our producers before the show. I was like, thank God Brett Tolman's fucked for this. What's going on? Okay, so I gotta start with this. Have you ever seen anything like this in your in your life? 
You know, I've seen some crazy things in Congress. Remember, the job I had before I was U.S. attorney was chief counsel over crime and terrorism in the United States Senate. And, and it was my role to actually interrogate potential hostile witnesses on congressional investigations. That's the real thing that Hunter's running from. I mean, this was an absolute circus. I've never seen anything like it, Benny. I think you highlighted it well. Um, the, the fact that he tried to make a move and then failed and ran away is not only embarrassing, but let's, let's keep in mind what he's really running from. And that is he would have to be under oath, not in front of all the cameras, not in a circus where members have three to four minutes to ask a meaningful question and he can dodge and he can avoid the question. Instead, he would have to sit there under oath and be deposed by former federal prosecutors and former government investigators who know how to ask questions. And that's what he's really running from. So what he is, and I would, this is actually very, very helpful to break it down. I, I hope I'm not misunderstanding here, but this is, common, regular and normal procedure to do a closed door hearing. This happens all the time. This has happened in the on the road to this moment with dozens of other witnesses. This has happened with Donald Trump's sons. Uh, Don Jr. sat for a nine hour closed door grilling right from uh, from his inquisitors. Uh, what makes Hunter Biden different? What makes him different, Benny? And you're right. This this is you know it's regular order. This is how the Congress really investigates things. When they when they eventually hold a hearing and they do it for the public to see on television, it's in 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 you know in large measure an effort to be able to show and reveal what they learned in the deposition that they that they conducted. Here, Hunter Biden has snubbed his nose at Congress and said, "I will not. I will not actually submit to the subpoena." Now this puts DOJ in an, in an awkward, awkward circumstance because they are the only ones that can enforce, they're the only ones that by statute have the authority to enforce a subpoena. And so DOJ has decided that they'll enforce a subpoena against Steve Bannon or they'll for, enforce a subpoena against other conservatives. And now all of a sudden they're faced with this, this, um, this question, will DOJ Will they be consistent and enforce a valid subpoena that came out of Congress or not? If they choose not to, good luck any 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 congressional committee ever being able to to issue subpoenas. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this would this would absolutely be a like the true destruction and erosion of the system if they make this uh, if they make this if they carve this out for Hunter, then everyone knows it's farcical, right? So the place that you've spent your life working and the government that you've spent your life, the Department of Justice that you've spent your life working for is now a farce, right? It is simply a, a illusory mafia protection racket for power and powerful families. No, no, that's exactly right. You, you talked about the arrogance, right? The hubris, the arrogance of Hunter Biden coming into Congress and, and wanting to, 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 in essence, say, look, I'm here. You guys are the ones with the issue and the problem. But then he didn't want to face the music when they were going to turn attention to him. And he takes off. The arrogance of Hunter Biden is only outmatched by the arrogance of Joe Biden. Joe Biden knows that his DOJ is, gonna, is not going to take down his family. He knows that because he has put in place people in positions of power that are going to act inconsistent with their oath of office. And, and the Democrats have now decided, and over the last decade, we've seen this evolution. They've decided that the ends do justify the means, even if it means we're going to ignore facts, we're going to ignore the law, we will not enforce the law, and we won't follow the law because we think we know better than what we're seeing happen. And the only way we can maintain power is if we put our political opponents in, in prison. It's a shameful chapter. There's, there's very little on the left. I talk to my friends that are on the left and, and, and they don't have an appreciation of what's going on because they're listening to just the echo chambers that won't highlight what you are, Benny, and others are highlighting. And that is the, de the deterioration of our, our law and order system in this country. Do you believe Tom Fitton's tweeting, hey, yo, Congress has the power to lock him up <laughs> in contempt of Congress. Is that true? It, it has to be enforced by DOJ. DOJ would have to get the, uh, the, the DC court 
to issue an arrest warrant. Um, they could they could do it without the warrant if they ordered the Capitol Police to to go and, and, and arrest him. And then they would have to bring a charge later for contempt that all hinges on someone in the Department of Justice saying, hey, this is unacceptable. I don't care who you are. You're not above the law. And we all know that Hunter Biden has been above the law for his entire life. That's why he ran from the congressional hearing. Uh, so this is quite interesting. Donald Don Jr., our research team is telling me, showed up for five congressional subpoenas for dozens of hours of testimony behind closed doors. Well, I mean, again, it's going to be hard to argue that this is not a farcical mafioso style protection racket. Does this remind you of the Department of Justice that you worked for? I mean, Brett, I've known you to be a very wise man, an honorable man. The lawyers that I speak with that like help me out in certain regards, they know you, they like have nothing but really nice things to say. You seem like a very, a man of deep integrity and the rule of law. Um, this must really strike at the core. I mean, you, th this must really hurt. This must be painful to watch. You well, know. you know, thank you, Benny. And, and I'll tell you, it is, it's, it's infuriating now. You know, you go from a period of disbelief to, to anger. And, and I look back when I first became a U.S. attorney and a congressman called me and asked me to launch an investigation in a political opponent. Mm -hmm. And the congressman was in the same party as me, a Republican. And I told him, don't ever call me again. I said, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be told or asked to go after a political opponent. If there's facts that support investigation, I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican, we'll go after it. In 2006, when I was U.S. attorney, I would have believed that the Department of Justice, for the most part, was going to be above politics. That was the first, coincidentally, Benny, that was the very first time that I heard about the Epstein um, island and about victims of the of, of Epstein's tra trafficking. Hmm. And when I saw the U.S. attorney in Florida at the time, who was U.S. attorney at the same time I was, when I saw what came out of there, this ridiculous charge, this poor investigation, no investigation of those that were, you know, participating in the conspiracy to traffic in young girls. That was my first wake up call that the Department of Justice was in trouble. And that was 2006. Wow. That took a different turn than I suppose the circus that's happening on the Hill and it, ha it merits a follow up. If you have a moment, are you are you talking yeah, you're, you're talking about Alex Acosta, right? And the, the charging in 2008. I and I think and there was so much political pressure to contain that investigation hmm. that the nature of the charges that eventually came out were were absolutely embarrassing. I don't know if all the blame rests on on you know any particular individual. I like I like Alex. I would not have thought that you know we would have any U.S. attorney that was willing to you know to to water down charges in order to protect individuals. But now we look at it right and we see the full scope of those that participated. Well, that should have been the largest conspiracy investigation of human mm -hmm. trafficking. Uh, this this con country ever saw, and, and and it still should be. And then you take Hunter Biden; it's the same mo. It is a conspiracy with multiple tank tentacles involving in countless individuals, millions of dollars, and powerful families. And we again see very little. We see a tax case out of California. We see a, a gun charge that's embarrassing that, that, that gets brought. None of them do the other half of the investigation, which is to source the money, where it went to and, and who it went to and, and do what we really would do with the investigators out there. They're so trained, Benny, to do these investigations. And I can't imagine how they must feel not being able to actually go forward. That's why you're seeing for the first time in years, whistleblowers in the IRS and, and, and others that are, that are furious at it. Because I think we all believed that that was not the DOJ that we worked for. You can perhaps answer with authority a burning question that I've had for an age, which is why are our law enforcement agencies protecting a dead pederast? Why did they continue? Why did they protect him for many years? Right. For a very long time. At, according to Cindy McCain, we all knew what Epstein was up to, but <laughs> everyone was scared. Why were they scared? I thought the McCain's were powerful. I thought the Department of Justice delivered justice. Yet it seems like the FBI ran immediately to his islands and to his home to hoover up all of his hard drives, all of the data, all of the information and do a capture and kill operation. What's happening here? 
Well, I think this is the very real divide, the continental divide, if you will, between the political leadership of agencies and those that get trained from the academy, go through the FBI, you know, protocols or, or other agencies and, and want to just root out crime. Here, I think the amount of pressure was not so much that they wanted to protect Epstein. It was what could happen to all those that were politically in power if they did go after Epstein in a way. I mean, look what happened. They, they actually... They came at him with a charge that was not going to result in any meaningful jail time. It wasn't going to vindicate any victims of the crimes. I mean, that's the stuff of a Hollywood movie. What we don't have is those behind the scenes conversations about, hey, we can't do this. We can't go after this individual because it would be such a political uproar and, and destruction of our, of our, you know, our country that we can't we can't afford to go forward with it and i don't know who those people are that that cave to that sort of pressure i'm not i'm not saying i'm i'm the brightest best lawyer out there but i i'll tell you what you'd have to remove me from office kicking and screaming before i'd agree to not investigate at, um, on behalf of every single victim of epstein island was epstein a uh, intelligence asset you know, I've, I've, I've heard the stories. I've heard that, uh, you know, the Mossad had information that truly could only come through some of the efforts of Epstein. Um, and who knows? I'm not going to put it past our national intelligence um, community that mm -hmm. they would work assets that have the ability, the profound ability to gain leverage on powerful people. Mm. Yeah, I mean, if you control the royal family and if you control former presidents right. and senators and congressmen, well, then you're in control, actually. That's, That's nice. Right. Like, isn't that the point? <laughs> like, now we're in control of everything. Well, it, that seems like a good motivator. Uh, for yeah, and it explains the arrogance. It explains the outright arrogance of those that are participating in a lot of this corruption that they, they don't fear. They don't fear because... They know things that we don't know. We're only beginning to uncover, you know, the the iceberg that's beneath the surface of the corruption involving whether it's the Bidens or the Clintons or or many of the others. Uh, final question for you, Brett. Will it work this Hunter Biden stunt? Obviously, you said you've 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 conducted these interviews before. You have such a deep knowledge of like how of how this works on Capitol Hill. You've done this in the Senate. You've spent your entire career actually dealing with criminals like this who are trying to skate the law. Uh, will this stunt today work? Here's what I hope happens. And I think there's a possibility. I, I'm hopeful that reasonable heads in the Department of Justice are going to say, look, we cannot take the positions we have on prior congressional subpoenas and not do it with Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. Then they have those conversations. They ultimately talk the Biden uh, legal team in to a closed door session. There might have some unique parameters and rules on it. But I'm hopeful that ultimately he gets in there and has to answer questions. And mm -hmm. if he has to take the fifth, then, you know, he does it. But he should be put in that hot box and he should be made to answer um, questions that are, are relevant to the scope of the potential corruption. Did it involve Joe Biden and to what extent did it? And if it did, then, you know, what will the Congress do after that? That's my hope, Benny. Do you think there's any way we can come back from this. I don't, man. I mean, now, now the people can see this is an oligarchy. We live inside of a, we live inside of an, not a republic, but an oligarchy with families that are above the law. And it's certainly not Trump that's being protected. It's, it's right. the Bidens and it's the super state. And I just don't, I don't know if there's any going back from that. I think Americans are getting pretty enraged at, quite frankly, this yeah, plus I the Epstein things happening, like, it all happens in sequence. I'm a believer. Like, I believe these things happen for reasons and they happen in threes. And it seems like a lot of powerful people are really sweating it these days um, when they thought they were untouchable. Yeah, I think that's right. I, you know, I know that that God is real and God has a plan for for all of us. And I think as a country, he does. But I also know, you know, having read the Bible and, and the history books, that there's a tremendous fall that comes after incredible pride and corruption. And, mm. and, and, and I worry about how far, how far is that fall? Mm. But I do have hope that, that, you know, someone else in charge understands and that we can come back. I think it will take someone that is willing to actually destroy 
the bureaucracy, the layers of government, and gets back to, I mean, we're so far. Can you imagine what founders of this, this country must be looking at the unserious silliness clown like, you know, atmosphere that our country has become right now? Yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah could be saved if you showed me one good man. Are we Sodom and Gomorrah? <laughs> yeah, yes, we are right now. But you uh, are a good man, Brett Tolman, and we thank, thank you. you. God bless you, sir, and Godspeed. Thank you. Brett Tolman could save Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm not sure he's counting on that. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. But ladies and gentlemen, that's what God required, right? to save the most wicked nation, city, state that ever lived. One good man, one good woman. Stand up, be counted. I will stand with you and be counted. I hope that you will stand with me and be counted. And I hope that you will help me work to save this place. That is what God requires. And so as simple Christians, that is what we can deliver. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are saving as well as we are facing very unsure economic times, the Fed is going to do everything they can to manipulate our economy uh, heading into the 2024 election to try and create the illusion that everything is going well and to alleviate pain. They will then cause far greater pain in the long run. So protect yourself now and protect yourself with Allegiance Gold, the people who I choose to help diversify my savings into something with actual real value. Have you checked the price of gold? Have you checked the stability of it? It's been wonderful, and you should consider uh, simply putting a little bit of your retirement or your IRA, 401k, into the professionals at Allegiance Gold. Trust them. I certainly do. Go to protectwithbenny.com today or call 844-66-BENNY. Get up to $5,000 in free silver with your qualifying purchase. Protect your future now with Allegiance Gold. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what an absolute wild, what a, what a bananas, bananas day as we have uh, seen, like time after time, uh, uh, the news cycle changes immediately before the show and we like just hit it. We hit it. Now, there have been some interesting things that have happened uh, in the meantime as we've been doing our interviews and been chatting, uh, one of the, uh, chatting with the experts, uh, one member of the House uh, said that Donald Trump um, incited an erection. Do we have that clip? I think that's very interesting and funny. Uh, it looks like we might not. Do we have the Byron Donalds clip? Yes. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Byron Donalds, one of our favorites, going in, uh, a brawler and a baller, uh, defending Trump in this hearing. Worth note, here we go. Well, look, let's be very clear. This isn't about Hunter Biden's white privilege. It's about Hunter Biden's Democrat privilege because Donald Trump Jr. showed up for five congressional subpoenas. There was never this circus where he was subpoenaed by House Democrats and he showed up on the Senate side or showed up at the White House to answer in some fake, phony, lame press conference, not actually going to the House and doing what he was compelled by a subpoena to do. Hunter Biden did that. And then he has the unmitigated gall to show up here when we know that he's, we're going through actually the, the legislation for contempt with, by the way, Mr. Chairman, we should actually get to the legislation of contempt. The speechifying is great, but let's do our business members. Um, he has the gall to come here, show up. And then when the Democrats are saying, Hey, he wants to speak, he leaves. This is a joke. This is a farce. The man has been subpoenaed by Congress. Congresswoman Anna Luna. She's great, man. Anna Paulina Luna is a rock star in the makings, and she represents a district just not too far from where we broadcast the studio. Proud to call her a friend, uh, and she was going in hard as well. We have a bright future. We have some very smart, up-and-coming Republicans. I'm sure it would be nice to scrape the top off of the like kind of rotted McConnell types, right, and to get down to the actual brass tacks, the real, like, members of Congress who have the energy to save America. Here is Congresswoman Paulina Luna. Hunter Biden failed to comply with our subpoena. Hunter Biden, I don't care about his drug addiction. Yes, you are. Many of us have experienced some of these awful things impacting our family, but that doesn't mean that Hunter Biden gets a pass or that we should feel any sympathy for him breaking the law. Um, I want to just point to behind me, U.S. Code 192, refusing of, a refusal of a witness to testify or produce papers. 
It means that you should be one subject to a misdemeanor, a fine up to $1,000, and anywhere from one to 12 months in prison. For your average American that doesn't have the connections that Hunter Biden has, this is what you face. So I want to just point out that when my colleague, Representative um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, says we must comply with the law, I agree with you. When a ranking member of Raskin pointed out that, uh, represent, or that Donald Trump's allies should be held and we should not tolerate these contemptuous violations of the rule of law, I agree with that. But then let's use these exact same standards against their own. Frankly, I think that as of right now, there is a double standard that exists. We have to hold him accountable. He broke the law. He will be held accountable. And that's exactly why I'm supporting this contempt proceeding. Thank you. Smart, sophisticated, wise, fact-based, non-hysterical, non-cortisol raging, uh, high IQ, not low IQ arguments from those who are coming up and coming up fast in the Republican Party, Byron Donald and Anna Paulina Luna. If you are watching from one of their districts in South Florida, stand proud. They are some of the superstars, along with Marjorie Taylor Greene, again, like causing Hunter Biden to tuck tail, piss pants, poop pants like his father and run away. This amazing clip, I gotta play the one more time, the MSNBC clip, uh, the MSNBC split screen, Royce, of Hunter Biden, like sprinting, sprinting out of Congress. Check this out. Sorry. I've lost it. Give me one or either one, there's MTG Hunter. Miss Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, apparently, you're afraid of my words. Uh, here <laughs> oh. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Wow, that's too bad. <laughs> I think it's clear and obvious for everyone watching this hearing today that Hunter Biden is terrified of strong conservative Republican women because he can't even face my words as I was about to speak to him. What a coward. What a coward. That is exactly what we found out today. What a coward. Now, I would uh, never advise you to look through Hunter Biden's laptop. Uh, it is horrifying. We've been sent copies of it and uh, printouts of it, and it is looking into the depths of hell, got to tell you. But um, it seems as though the Democrats on Capitol Hill are far less interested in Hunter Biden's sex crimes and far less interested in the uh, pornography that he was illegally filming because you can't traffic prostitutes for points you can't engage in human trafficking and abuse women. But the only erection that Democrats on Capitol Hill were interested in investigating is the erection that Donald Trump incited as uh, Premier Jayapal, a member of the Democrat caucus, uh, so hilariously said once again uh, in the committee hearing. Here you go. Appreciate the passion from my friend across the aisle and the outrage. I think we're all outraged about many things. But if we're going to talk about outrageous things that have happened or things that have never happened, let's talk about the fact that President Trump incited an erection. Uh, and <laughs> maybe that too. <laughs> yeah, you could talk about that too, I guess. Maybe we should talk about that too. The president incited an insurrection. <laughs> I, I mean, come on. At least you, at least we had like a moment of levity there. They all laughed. They all laughed together. <laughs> uh, Chuck Schumer said the same thing. This is the this is the original one. Dem Democrats getting uh, Democrats getting a little too excited about Donald Trump these days. The uh, the OG the OG Chuck Schumer. Uh, we, D Donald Trump incited the erection. Premier Jaipal actually laughing along with all of Republicans there. It's nice to actually, it's nice to see that. Chuck Schumer had less of a, uh, less of a comedy club audience. Watch this. Senators will have to decide if they believe Donald John, Donald John Trump incited the erection, insurrection against the United States. <laughs> I should be more astute. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, they listed our show as the source of the first 
giant poster board that was hung up in Congress had our show right there on it. Here, we have the, uh, we have the photograph. We should be more astute. We should be more in control, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, how dare we? We, we are illustrious members of now the congressional record, The Benny Show. And we thank you for that. The, like, just made my day, honestly, seeing salty, salty Jamie Raskin. R Jamie Ratskin, as we call him, because his hair does, in fact, look just like rat skin. Uh, B, the first cue card that is held up in Congress is The Benny Show. Who, baby? Do you wish to support us? Do you wish to support our work here? We ain't done. We, 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 we will not be stopping. Please join the Benny Brigade. Join the Benny Brigade. For less than a $5 foot long per month, you can support us and keep our show independent. Our show is one of the last truly independent shows out there that is not completely owned by a hedge fund or by uh, corporate media or by some uh, evil, dark, octopus-armed, tentacled organization. We have the capacity to speak freely, to go live. We will be going live tonight. I'm not sure if we have the promo graphics, but we'll be going live tonight for Donald Trump's uh, debate, along with the Nikki Haley DeSantis debate. We'll be bringing you all that live commentary. So we'll be live for another three hours tonight. You can tune in here and watch as we go back and forth, kind of between the Nikki Haley, uh, Ron DeSantis on CNN, Donald Trump on uh, Fox News debate. And then Vivek will also be live uh, on our friend Tim Pool show. And so we'll kind of like be bouncing around, you know, for what's going on. And so we we'll, we have the debate Mageddon tonight. Uh, we are, we obviously uh, are completely and totally supported by you and by our audience. And so we say thank you. If you wish to join the Benny Brigade today, you will not only uh, support our programming, but you will get the greatest keychain uh, available and known to man. Uh, the keychain is made by an American patriot, a leathersmith, and it has the salty army tank on it. Ladies and gentlemen, bennyjohnson.com slash brigade. bennyjohnson.com slash brigade. Uh, will we be live tonight for another three hours? The answer is yes. Will we be live until there's like no more content to be live for tonight? Yes. Will we have special guests joining our show tonight? Yes. To talk about debate again. You'll have Vivek, you'll have Ron DeSantis, you'll have Donald Trump, all on three different networks. How will we cover it all? We got you. Because we have the, we are investing in the best team and the best tech in the industry. Uh, how do we have the energy to do that? Blackout coffee. How, what have I been sitting next to the entire time? Blackout coffee. A, uh, I promise you, this is not a vodka soda. I promise you, this is not whiskey. Uh, this is my blackout coffee on ice, and we are rocking and rolling. Blackout coffee gives us the strength, the power, the energy, and the capacity to fight the communists. The energy to fight the communists is a very, very important and potent weapon because the communists are driven by their love of evil and their love of power in this world. And that is a very, that is a very potent force as you, as we are learning. And so you must be able to fight the commies and you should drink non-commie coffee. That is why I drink blackout coffee, ladies and gentlemen, and you should too. Blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Use the coupon code Benny and get 20% off your first order. Check all the gear section for some really cool swag. Blackoutcoffee.com slash Benny. Be awake, not woke. Love that tagline. Let's be awake, ladies and gentlemen, with the verse of the day from Psalms 29. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Ladies and gentlemen, we wish for peace to be upon you. There is no peace for Hunter Biden. We'll play this uh, split screen of Hunter Biden running away from Marjorie Taylor Greene one last time because it's too good. It's too good. <laughs> no peace. No peace for evil men, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but we wish peace upon you, and we wish that the Lord gives you strength. 2024 will be our year of strength, our year to strengthen what we are doing here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and to attack and to fight true evil. And this is what evil running looked like today. Rejoice. Watch. Gentlemen, time's expired. Chair, recognize Ms. Green from Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, excuse going? me, Hunter. Oh, apparently, you're afraid of my words. Whoa. Uh, here <laughs> oh. I like to reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Burst their bubble. Wow, that's too bad.